Okay, so this is the news as I see it on June 23rd, 2020. Uh, so, the thing that prompted me to do this is actually this news story on uh, the statues and monuments being attacked. Again, I, I've talked about this in the past, check out previous videos on that. But uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm finding this horrible. I can't believe people in the United States, especially American citizens, are out there tearing down uh, historic monuments. That's just a bit absurd uh, what's happening with that. So um, at Lafayette Park, that's Andrew Jackson. You see the picture over here. And uh, yeah, so he was a general, obviously. At the time in American history, by modern standards, there were some pretty horrible acts going on, like relocation of uh, Native Americans, um, you know, war and stuff. So it's, uh, you know, what that person was involved in, sure, there's some really bad things about that aspect of the life. It was also early America. Um, what natives were doing to each other at that time was also pretty ferocious, like enslaving one another. Um, at least a hundred years in the past, um, were enslaving each other, um, mutilating and massacring, wiping out whole tribes uh, of one another when they were engaged in war. So um, taking over rival tribes' territories, forcing them out. So people can focus on what um, Americans uh, or who was America then. Um, what what they did but they when natives are upset about these actions because they targeted those groups sure i understand that but um if people want to ignore history um or not ignore history then they should look at um the whole thing which is that native groups were doing it to one another also um you know it's it's unfortunate, but uh, people weren't nice back then. People still aren't nice. But uh, tearing down these monuments. So Trump's saying that he's going to, like, prison time for people. It's up to 10 years in jail for attacking these monuments. Uh, so it's not a minor thing. Um, but I, I was just sort of uh, amazed that, um, you know, people would actually go and first like spray painting graffiti just hopefully it's a stupid act of, of teenagers or uh young adults um but all these people that the ones that are actually doing the act um you know if they're out there doing this then you know all these people could be in jail as a result it's pretty um this one's from what in fox um they were trying to set up a autonomous zone in, in uh, Washington, D.C. Seattle's being shut down. Um, they plan on retaking it, and they've slowly been taking street by street, not running street battles, but the protesters have been handing back the city. I guess the party's done. People are pretty much camped, and um, they're sort of handing things back over now, as of yesterday. But, uh, you know, the spray painting and damage, I don't know why people would destroy their own capital. Like, if they honestly care about America, you don't destroy um, the capital's monuments. Um, these, those aren't the acts of people that um, support their own country. Um, again, it's not about the bad things people do, but it's about the good values. So and Andrew Jackson is best known for being the impetus of the Democratic Party, ironically. So he's the person that sort of motivated uh, Americans to find, found a, a Democratic Party. Um, again, he wasn't the worst guy back then, but he was a pretty famous general. News. Okay, so yeah, it's... Uh, a lot of social media stuff is also coming out of this, so there's the push between social media and, and, and freedom of speech. Um, obviously, social media is a private company, so they can should be able to restrict um, you know, what they want advertised in their mediums, but um, they're under the same blanket as ISPs for what their users do. So, like... It, it's complex because uh, I guess the Trumpism here is that they're saying, oh yeah, we're going to remove the third-party blanket for all these social media companies that are censoring. 
but the irony is is that that third party blanket allows them to actually be more liberal in what they choose to censor and not censor because if they lose that third party blanket and then they're liable for everything that's said on that platform and they need to get rid of anything that's in remotely questionable as opposed to just the stuff that's criminal um so right now it's more criminal speech hate speech incitement to violence things like that but as soon as that liability blanket for civil lawsuits is gone then um, basically anything that could result in a lawsuit uh, becomes uh, something that they're personally liable for and it would totally um, rest it would basically paralyze them to actually offer a public um, broadcast medium so it, it, I, I have no idea how that would work but um, you know, service providers, broadcasters. I I, th I think that it's a little, I think the people who do the things or produce the content ultimately should be responsible for what they choose to um, make available. Like if they're providing their content to a broadcaster, then they and the broadcaster, rather than being jointly liable, um, should be seen as a conduit to, to that. Uh, but um, it's whether they're complicit in knowingly doing the act or not. So I think if you just have a medium where people upload on their own, yeah, it makes sense for, for it to be a medium of broadcast to enable free freedom of speech um, as opposed to being a broadcaster who is actively engaged in the content. So I think maybe two classes of broadcasters would make a lot more sense. Um, so companies like YouTube, for instance, um, they could subscribe to an open platform broadcast. So um, they're an enabler of broadcasting as opposed to a moderator of broadcasting. So I, I think that if every broadcaster is required to be a moderator, you just won't have the platforms because uh, putting something on the internet is a form of publication. So um, if any medium of publication is liable, then you know, internet service providers become liable um, if they allow data to be transferred. Um, you know, web hosts become liable. It's sort of how it is, but um, I think that there there should be an open platform versus closed platform because it's it's with the amount of data it's not reasonable to expect people to be able to moderate to that degree which what that comes down to is that either even you have the open web or you don't have the open web so they've been pushing more with daca well, not daca but um uh, millennial copyright act and, and otherwise all the copyright acts for stopping intellectual property from being uh, transferred um, that's like there's a fine line between the two and I think that um, if they just allowed an open medium and treat it everybody who's actually making that material available by uploading it you know the, the point of upload should be the point of broadcast not everything that's after that um, you know, whoever makes that available, whatever human enables that should be responsible for it, as opposed to web platforms that allow information to be transferred. Yeah. Nonetheless, um, that's all secondary, but there's a lot of movement on this, and I think that it's going to be some form of election silencing, which actually brings up an interesting point that apparently Biden has finally suppressed Trump in terms of uh, fundraising, which is crazy because uh, Trump was totally trouncing uh, Biden in terms of uh, the amount of funds that were being raised. So that's a big shift. This at the same time that, I don't know, 6,000 people showed up or something to the rally they were expecting a million people at. Um, apparently part of that was Twitter, uh, not Twitter, sorry, Twitch. I think it was Twitch. Hmm. So one of the new, like, watch something for seven seconds and get something meaningful from it, platforms. Um, but they were joking around, not Twitch, Twitch is more than seven seconds. Um, I, I obviously don't use it, but it's one of the trendy millennial things, uh, you know, where people dance and stuff. Somebody will know it, I, I don't know, because I don't use it. Um, more money's coming. Uh, yeah, so zero interest or negative interest rates and free money. So 
should be a good uh, if you can buy an election now's a, not, now's probably the one time you have a chance to buy it out so we'll see what happens with it but uh yeah round two saying it will be very generous so i'm not sure if that's six hundred dollars thousand dollars i think a lot of people with 40 plus million unemployed people in america you, you how are people going to live you know it's just like it's going to start crunching down um, especially if this goes into the second wave or spike, then uh, things are still progressively going forward. Um, I, I'd like to think it was better, but it seems like the situation is uh, deteriorating still. Um, if things continue, you know, there's a point to where the safeguard or safety net actually can't hold things back anymore. Uh, that's what this stimulus funding is partially about, is people need this to... Um, stay calm collected and not go into emergency panic mode um, european union considering recommending to block entry to americans <laughs> yeah it's like global trade and travel cruise lines all that stuff is still being hammered but uh more restrictions americans are uh knocking out the work visas and european union is blocking off Americans so everything's tightening up and isolating more on a national basis I'm, I'm a globalist I guess I, um, I'm not a nationalist and I think that all this stuff um, is unfortunate it's really governmental control and the downward slope towards totalitarianism and uh, police states uh, it's just a question of time for how long until technology is fully enabled to control pop, enable population control. Uh, I, I think population management is needed in this type of situation, but uh, when it's restriction as opposed to coordination, then you have haves and have nots and people are in the have not category. You know, one in eight Americans being essentially deemed unnecessary uh, when it comes to a point of emergency and saving uh, resources for the things that will keep things going a lot of people could fall between those cracks uh, even in places like Canada um, there's only so mu much water that can come out of the taps before they run out of water um, and then uh, like national nationalization so obviously when the government's buying up all the debt and bonds of all these private companies all the stock buyouts and uh otherwise they're basically buying the interest in these companies is a form of covert nationalization so uh, there's only so much time before the economy transfers from more laissez-faire which maybe it isn't anymore to a command economy which it's moving into with the war acts. And then after that, that's basically essentially a so socialist or nationalized fascist system or communist system, like social system. Uh, Mike Tyson is back. Oh, uh, Mexico. So that's a pretty big earthquake. I haven't heard about big deaths or anything, but it uh, caused a little bit of a kerfluffle and damage there. 7.5 is pretty big. Um, more Trumpisms. Do, do, do. So armed protesters take over Atlanta Wendy's parking lot where Ray sure It's funny because that parking lot, the Wendy's itself was already burned down, but um, that's a news story. But why the heck would you even be there? At the same time, uh, this continues to be a heated, no pun intended, issue. Um, but people don't got nothing better to do. Um, so especially with a lot of unemployed people, what are unemployed people going to do, you know? Like, they are angry unemployed people. That's uh, millions of angry people. When they become angry, desperate people, uh, you know, it's, the situation could actually get worse. Um, especially if somebody starts giving them money to do something. <laughs> a lot of sexual assaults in the news uh, last 24 hours.
Yeah. So again, I, I like again. I think that these people that are destroying historic monuments, stranded on them, and uh, more Trumpism. Same same story. The China trade deal. So this has been the last twenty four hours. U.S. trade representative was like, "Yeah, that trade deal's done." And then Trump's like, "No, it's not done." And then the trade representative's like, "No, that trade deal's not done anymore." Um, but there's definitely some crazy stuff going on with that, and there's still a trade war, but they have a trade deal and trade war, so it's just a lot of uh, chess playing. There's a lot of stuff going on in the background, especially the economy, um, U.S. supply chain. So again, if if like shooting yourself in the foot and then getting hit in the head you know like it's a rough situation for the economy especially if it needs to completely reorganize um while all this is going on uh honestly i think even the military has its own logistic issues uh, or logistics issues where it, it didn't have its supply chains in check without uh, chinese supplies so um it's not an easy task for them to reorganize and if you're talking about doing it in the middle of a recession when you don't have uh, the economic tax interest rates to zero and, and, and falling under zero um, massive unemployment unless you actually grab a hold of the situation and apply the resources and people through an organized effort it's just chaos uh, huh. but on the good news, I think the market is still up. Apparently, three out of four times, at any given time, the market will be up. One in four times, the market will be down. But with a whole bunch of free money flowing into the markets and a lot of uh, Robin Hood investors also pumping money in, uh, there's a lot of room to make money on the markets. But at the end of the day, you got to see where the money's going because, again, that's a prompt for the economy. If it's not going anywhere that will help create a new functioning society, then all that money is going to build quarantine. So if all these companies that are being invested in are the ones that are establishing the system for how to have a system work with 40 on a million unemployed people there won't be inputs into employment um, or restructuring the economy in a way that reutilizes all those unemployed people and if the tap runs out what are you going to do with all those unemployed people and that's the problem with the market and the investment in the market um, and all the the defaults and failures and and bankruptcies is that if the money doesn't go to the failing companies then you have a lot of unemployed people Ooh, segue to stop making a self-balancing scooter that was so cool i remember that from like a decade or two ago um that was very cool they never really made the big push, like the massive push. Like, I can walk outside today and there's not a segue. I'm sure 20 years ago, people might think that that was where the future was going. Uh, they they should kind of stop making talc or something like that. I'm not sure if that's really an issue, but talc apparently is uh, not something that will be used in baby products anymore. I think they stopped using it in a bunch of places pr prior to that. VMware, but it doesn't make the virtualization stuff cost money. I like I like virtualizing the OSs. They're really useful. Safest way to be on the internet, actually, that I know of. School day. Um, Apple Home has been making a big marketing push um apple apple microsoft is cutting its streaming services and they're saying go with facebook i'm thinking maybe they uh, they see google as a competitor 
Um, more VR stuff. I love the VR stuff. I want to get more VR stuff. But Oculus is discontinuing uh, its low-end product line. It's actually amazing it's taken this long to get uh, VR out there, but hopefully there's continuous improvement on that. Um, race, 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 discrimination, race, commentary, rape, okay. Um, sports, is it even happening? Like, I'm not sure. There's probably a lot big shakeup in the sports section also. You think that, you know, if they didn't have the backing of the network networks, then uh, there'd be a lot more trouble with these guys not being able to actually have uh, any funds. Of course, merchandise is a big element of uh, their income, but uh, obviously fans in the stadiums is something that can be an intake too. Uh. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, space in astronomy news. Uh, yeah, so apparently there's water underneath the uh, outer surface or outer atmosphere. <laughs> An eclipse happened. The Mars copter. Apparently it's like it's flying at 100,000 feet when it's 9 feet off the ground in terms of the amount of atmosphere that's present. Um, yeah, but uh, this should be interesting. It hasn't launched yet, so it's not news, but once it actually, uh, Perseverance uh, gets on there and this thing takes off, it should be nice. It will be interesting to see what they actually do with that um, and how it's an advantage over... Uh, satellite imagery but it, I'm guessing it will allow them to scan a lot more of the ground at a much faster rate from an aerial view so yeah it's a bit like having a drone it basically is uh, COVID still going up what the heck mm. Okay, a little bit of race in there with COVID. Um, yeah, so apparently a bunch is still going up. Global cases, especially Brazil. Um, do I even have that up somewhere? So this is out of COVID19live.info. Um, but each of these red ones is 100,000 or more cases. Um, Lawyers launch bid to Fremont Pro. Um, but uh, there's a lot of um, countries that have over 100,000 cases now, so it's just not all one uh, area. But Brazil is a particular problem area right now. Um, I'm not sure if I can get that in there. Let's see here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's 1,100,000 confirmed, but that's at the midway point. These are the the problem. The thing that makes this sort of interesting is that um, Brazil was being accused of totally suppressing the information. So if you figure over a million people in Brazil have already gotten it, and uh, globally cases are going up by 180,000 per day, then... Uh, right now in the U.S., over a million infected. Uh, two, over or probably around 2.5 million people have gotten it. That's what like we're talking of one in a hundred people in the U.S. Um, they're staying between five and 15 percent uh, infection already. Um, could be months, months and months to herd immunity. Again, it's the, that question of what comes first, the herd immunity or the vaccine. But uh, it's pretty uh, scary, but it's 120,000 deaths there. Brazil, you're looking at uh, over 50,000 deaths. Other countries, uh, 
Given Mexico, Mexico has 20,000, there's as many dead people as uh, are currently infected in Mexico. Um, but other than that, there's, this pandemic is far from over. Um, in fact, if you look at this, if I can even zoom out properly here. There's only Eritrea, maybe? Somaliland, so there's no numbers coming from Somaliland. Turkmenistan, apparently they're just like, it does, it, they're, they've banned the word. Um, it's like jail time or something if you message it. Some Pacific Island out here. Uh, even Greenland and apparently Antarctica doesn't have any cases, but this is what you call a pandemic and uh, North Korea no figures It's uh, still going it's still going It's not gone Not by a long shot But Apparently the case counts are down with only 12,000 new cases, only 12,000 new cases um, yesterday in the U.S. Oh, they're up, I guess. Yeah, up, up. But some of these countries are a lot larger or smaller in terms of population. One thing that would be nice to see added to this chart is uh, per capita infection rate rather than just um the figures on numbers but per capita for each country but that's a whole lot of people that have gotten this again if you look at that that's more than one in a thousand people in the world and climbing anywho i think that that am i to the end yeah that's the news is i see it for June 23rd, 2020.